Subo desana, dilama shvido bis. Hello, good morning. We had a great night's sleep in Levan's guest house, and we are heading today to the village of Dartlo, about 12 kilometers to the west of Omalo. The majestic and ancient Kisselo fortress in the distance. Some people, as it's only 12 kilometers away, will decide to hike this if they come up here for the whole summer. But as we're a little bit pressed for time and there's a lot to see in this majestic region, we decided to hitch a ride with Levan in his Delica. Everywhere you look, every way that the road turns is just another beautiful view, whether it's thick forest or a panoramic mountain view. As we're on the approach to the village of Dartlo, we can see that there is a big, ferocious river that we'll need to cross. On our approach to the village, we can see it already in the distance. The village of Dartlo is located in the valley where two huge mountains meet. Can't wait to check it out. You can see already it's going to be a very, very, very special experience to visit this ancient village. Crossing the river is a little bit bumpy, so it's kind of like a Georgian massage. Here we are, and we can see already this type of slate that is very rare and only found in the Tushi region. You can look right up to the top, you'll see many of the ancient Tush towers that are actually originally a Dagestani design. Okay, time to explore. Situated 1,850 meters above sea level, Darklo is like something of the past. It's amazing to even be here and be in this village and imagine what it must have been like in ancient times when warriors would have defended this city from the rooftops of this Tushetian towers that you can see in the background. Thanks to the efforts of the locals and also some efforts from the World Bank, there's actually been a lot of work done to restore this once abandoned village. And you'll see new wood balconies popping up, thankfully preserved in the beautiful Georgian tradition, as you see here. It's also worth mentioning that the slate that is used in the roofs and to build these towers is only allowed to be built by Tushetians, and it's got a special name called Sipikva. We even saw a little friend. Unfortunately, this village is almost abandoned, but there are, thankfully, a few locals who come up and spend the summer here. Exploring the winding roads and seeing how beautiful the views are here, I'm very keen to start our hike up to the next village of Kvavlo and see how the view will compare from up there. But enough of this faffing around, I want to get to the top and see a bit more. Yamu, yamu, zabidet, let's go! Oh. 
Although not the most well signposted of routes, apart from one yellow sign at the very bottom, um, it is it is not really difficult to go wrong, to be honest. You just follow the trail, zigzagging up the mountain pass to the village of Kvavlo. <laughs> And finally, we made it! The hike up was way worth it. Look at this unbelievable view. Just over the other side, you can see the village of Danlo, which you can actually access by car and drive right around to the village of Kvavlo at the top, where you'll find the Kvavlo Hotel, where you can even enjoy something to eat and a nice warm cup of tea after your gruelling two kilometre hike, almost vertically up a mountain. Tusheti was actually a place of refuge for those who still have, and even still today, have unique belief systems that incorporate elements of paganism. But most people choose to worship at shrines called khati, like this one. You can see the wax from some of the candles that are still melted on there from recent prayers. How on earth did a horse get up to the top of here? He's very, very friendly and very sweet. It was nice to give him a little stroke and a love. <laughs> so that just gets me thinking about our highlight of our trip, which I can't wait for. As if today hasn't been incredible enough, I'm really, really getting excited for our horse ride. 27 kilometers of it though, it's gonna be a bit sore, but I'm sure the views are gonna be stunning. How they're gonna beat this, I'm not quite sure. Well, I'm excited to find out. I enjoyed sitting here, taking in this incredible view, having some nuts and some tea. Are you okay? Lucy's sitting with me, enjoying okay? and having a laugh, also stunned by this mountain scenery. Here we have Hannah, Levan, our driver, and also Bicho Raif. It's time to start heading down after some well-deserved rest and we're taking every step very, very slowly just to string out and enjoy this view as much as we can. This small path is really easy. It's definitely more of a walk than a hike. And you can see the third village of Danlo in the background, one of Tushetti's 48 villages. We're all having a great time, and I really, really wish that we could stay up here for the whole of summer, not just for today. this we stumbled upon a few poles who had some issue with a bike let's see if we can fix it Bye, Hannah. <laughs> and they've taken Hannah with them so after a bit of help from Levan the bikers are on their way We are almost back down at Dartlow. We met briefly at the bottom to get our friend Hannah back from the bikers. And as they said goodbye and rode off into the distance, it's time for us to say goodbye as well. Maybe we'll meet again one day, who knows? One thing's for sure, they certainly had a beautiful trip. 
just like we did. Stay tuned to find out what we get up to tomorrow. See you next time. Thanks for watching.